introducing your data to your audience is an art and you can master this art by creating nice and professional outputs like this. So watch this video if this is of interest to you. Let's create a new R script and add our libraries or packages. So I'm using GT Summary, Dplar and Forcats. So the GT Summary package has a built-in data set called Trial. So let's see that in a, in a better fashion. So I'm going to use a package called FlexTable and then send the output of this trial to FlexTable and you can see the table in a more user-friendly way. So it has some data for tumors, different treatments were given for different age groups and different stages of the tumors were handled. And let's try to represent this data. So I'm going to create another data frame called DF so that we can manipulate it further if you want. So here is the data. It has some labels there as well. So the data looks good and we can start making our first summary table. So let's start creating a very simple table summary output. And we can simply pipe the output of our data frame DF to the table summary function and it will give us an output. There we go. So it has given us an output which looks far from what we wanted to produce. So we'll start modifying it and see how we can better it. So our goal today is to produce something like this instead of the raw format which you can see on the right hand side. So let's start working on it. We can add another verb there. We can call it by equals TRT or the treatment. And you will see that if I run it, the two treatments, the drug A and the drug B, are now shown side by side in two different columns and you can compare the difference between both. So instead of the numerical value of the age, we also want to show the age groups. So I'm going to use this script to create different age groups. We have a detailed video on how to do this. You can watch them separately. So we have different age groups for our summary. And the last one is true is NA. That means if the age doesn't match, then it will be an NA. So with that, we can run this script and then create our age groups. When I'm creating a large table summary output, I prefer to create it in smaller chunks so that I get much better control. For example, in some cases you want to sort them alphabetically. In some cases you want to sort it by frequency, etc. And then you can also remove them if you want it at any point of time so that it doesn't disturb the whole script. So let's start building our final table summary. So I'm using the include command and saying include the treatment and the age group. So if I run this and I'm going to say by equals treatment. So the drug A and drug B would be on side by side. So with that, I can create the output and store it in T1. And then when I print T1, I would get an output like this, which will show the age group which we just created. So we can see much more clearer view of the age now with the distribution based on the age groups. And remember the fact that the tables which you're creating are for others to see. So we have to give more user-friendly labels. So using the label command in table summary, I labeled or relabeled the age group to patient age group. And then we can add some more information in there. We can add an overall column. So you can see there is an overall column in there now. We can also add a p-value to compare the different treatments, the drug A and drug B. So you would see that we have a p-value in there. We want our label to stand out. So I can add a bold command and say bold underscore labels. And if I run it, let's see what it does. So the patient age group or your label is now bold. You can also bold all the categories like different levels. So if I run this, you would see that 0, 10, 11, they are all bold. But we don't want to do that, so I'm just going to remove that. So I like to add the add underscore n. Let's see what it does. And you would see the difference now. There is n, which is 189, but the overall total is 200. And you can see there's 11 unknowns. So these have been removed from when it counted the n. So it's very useful. 
the overall structure of the table looks good. Let's do a bit more fine tuning and wrap it up. So I'm going to think about removing the unknown age groups. So I can say missing equals no. And you would see that the unknown has been removed. So these are 189 patients who have proper age groups. You can also use missing as if any and then try to control the groups which you want to display by another command which I find it very very useful and here we go. I find it very useful to use the remove underscore row underscore type command which gives you a control over what you want to display or what, what you want to hide. For example in the age group I don't want to display certain levels. So I'm saying I don't want to see these levels in my final output. So if I run it you would see that suddenly those levels are gone but our percentages are still maintained because the percentages are row wise percentages so out of 189 the per how many of them are in the age group 51 to 60 etc is still maintained. Also note that the unknowns are not counted in so the percentages are from 189 not out of 200. Now let's push forward and create another table summary and in this case I'm going to use the continuous variable called age. And remember all the summaries should be exactly the same so that we can combine them later. So I need to introduce the by equals treatment so that side by side output is shown. Notice that in the table which we created the age is just being shown as median and IQR the interquartile range the lower quartile and the upper quartile and the median but we can change it we can say that I want to treat all continuous variables as something like continuous 2 so if I run it what happens nothing because we need to define what continuous 2 is so we can put another line in there and tell the system or the table summary command that for the continuous variables we need to display a certain summaries and the summaries are going to be the, the minimum and maximum which is a range the lowest value and the highest value which you can see the range is being displayed now so the median the low quartile and the upper quartile and I can see that I've made a mistake. I've put two commas there just before the statistics, but table summary is ignoring it so far. I'm going to fix it in a minute. So the mean and standard deviation is also going to be shown in the third line. So there's a mistake. I can see I've actually put two commas there, reduce it to one comma. And we have a good summary now showing the range, the median IQR and the mean. And then to keep the uniformity of the tables, I'm going to add all that other bits there as well. Overall p-value, bold the labels, etc. So T1 and T2 would look very similar when we combine them together. Let's very quickly create our third table. And in the third table, we would like to display the grade, the grade of tumor. And exactly the other bits like overall p, etc. And similarly, I can do another one, T4, which is for the stage, different stages of the tumor. So using the same continuous variable script, which we created earlier, I can use the fifth table for the marker. Again, it's going to give us the range, median, and mean, standard deviation, etc. And all the other bits remain the same. There's a bit of a trick here to handle the dichotomous data. For example, yes and no. For example, we have a response field which has the yes and no output. Let's see how we can manage that for our display. So here is the sixth summary table which I'm using and I'm using the treatment and the response. So if I look at the response variable, it's basically zero and one. And if I look at the class of this to find out the, the type, it just tells me it's an integer variable. So zero and one as integers. So we can use that and convert this into a dichotomous variable 
using the factor. So I'm using mutate command saying response equal as factor response. And then we end up having 0, 1. And of course, there's some unknowns because of NA, which are not counted in, in terms of the, the overall percentages. When you publish your final report, you're not going to use response 0 and 1. Instead of that, you would like to give it some more meaningful value. For example, in this case, I've recorded this factor and said if it's 0, then it should be called as no. And if it's 1, it should be called as yes. So let's run it and you will see something interesting. Suddenly you'll see that you don't see them as yes and no. All it says is response and unknown. So the table summary is simply showing the yes values and not labeling them as yes or no, just saying these are the positive responses and these are the unknown responses. So to be able to make more meaning out of that, I can convert this using the command all dichotomous to categorical variables. So suddenly you see yes and no appearing there. So if this is what you want, you got to follow this step of all dichotomous equals categorical variables. So that'll do the job for you. You can also sort the categorical variables by frequency or by alphanumeric sorting. So you can get an output which gets sorted by frequency. In this case, it doesn't make sense. So I'm just going to comment it out. So let's try to finalize this one. And remember that we are ultimately going to combine all our individual table summaries. So it should follow exactly the same structure which we have been following so far for other tables. So this is the output. And now let's do the next one, the seventh one. And again, it's a dichotomous variable. So using death as factor and then converting zero to no and one to yes, we get this output. Now let's create the final table summary. And this is going to be about the field called time to death or TT death. Let's see what it means. So if you go to the data set, you can see there's a TT death field, which has a, some times there. And I'm using that as continuous variable. And then it's again, it's going to give us median, IQR, mean, and range, like we have done so far for the others. So now we've got all the tables ready. Let's do the combining and then finally beautifying those tables. So now we can simply combine the tables by using the table stack command and giving the list of all the individual tables which we wanted. Remember I said I like to do small tables so that I can have more control and I can simply remove one table or two tables if I want it in the final output. So the final output looks fine to us, but it's still not the same what we wanted to produce. So we need to do a bit more things to get this final publication ready output from this. So now is the time to use the flex table package and we can simply pass the output of the T full which is the complete table which we have just created, which you can see on the right hand side. So pass the output of T full to the as underscore flex underscore table command. And this is from GT summary package. I always like to put the name of the library or package in the front so that when you have large number of packages loaded, you don't get confused. Where is this command coming from? So if I run it now and print it out on the screen, you would see now suddenly it has converted to a flex table and you can see slight differences. So let's make use of a built-in theme from flex table. And if I run it, you would see that it's going to give us an output which has shaded lines or highlighted lines. Of course, I can use two themes and pass this to another theme called theme box and you'll see the transformation. So we have best of both the words now. So FlexTable has so much functionality that we can't cover it in one complete video, but we're going to use some of it. For example, I want to reduce the size of the font for the whole table to size eight. And you can see that everything has become smaller. I would like to make the second column or the end column as bold. So remember it follows, the flex table follows I and J, I is row and J is column. So J equals two means the second column has to be made bold and we can see the output. So we can also make more changes. For example, the p-value field, which is the sixth column, can be converted to italics by using the italic command. J equals six, which is the sixth. Now let's make the second column with a different color. So you can either just specify as two. In this case, I've just given it as C2 because I could actually give more columns in that as well. So you can see that the color of the second column or the end column has changed. 
So now we're going to change the color of all the headings or the heading rows. So in this case, I'm doing it manually by saying I, row equals 1, 7, 12, etc. And then if I run it, it'll change all those background colors into the gold color. Similarly, we can also increase the size of the fonts for all those rows or for all those labels. So you can see all the labels have been bold. Now our final aim is to create a Word document with all this output. So I've used an RMD output. So put all the script in there. And then if I run it, I should get a Word document created. I hope you found this information useful and practical. Thank you very much for watching it and I'll see you in the next one.